वेलकम यू वॉचिंग न्यूज क्लिक एंड दिस इज आर एंड स्पेशल आई एम ऑन इंदिर चक्रवर्ती एंड विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन द इकोनॉमी इन दिस ईयर एंड वेल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी अ नाइट मेयर ऑफ अयर प्रॉब्लम द वर्स्ट ईयर वी हैड इन दिस एंटायर मिलेनियम विल बी रिमेंबर्ड फॉर द करोना वायरस एंड जस्ट वेन वी थॉट वी पुस्ट इट अवे वॉट डिड Uh, we see it's come back with a new hat with a mutation and we'll have to wait and see what happens in 2021 but this was also the worst year for india's economy perhaps the worst year since we became independent and today we are going to do a quick recap of the top 5 reasons why this was so terrible for india's economy reason number 1 disaster number 1 if i have to say that is the gdp which is the total income that uh, the entire country has all of us together the everything that we have produced goods and services and everything that we have earned this is the first time since 1979 in 41 years that we are going to see the gdp contract in 1979 it happened because oil prices shot through the roof and there was a severe drought in india and in those days we were largely an agricultural economy so there was a contraction in 2020 what has happened this is the worst contraction we are seeing and mostly because of the covid lockdown we are likely to go down by 7.5% in 2020 compared to 2019 so our gdp instead of growing is going to go down and you can blame the corona virus for it but you know things like things were already bad for the last several quarters for india's economy think about it 2019 itself had a very dismal gdp growth rate just 4.9% not even 5% and if you look at the first quarter which was well before the corona virus hit us the first quarter of 2020 which is january to march our growth was a dismal 3.1% so just don't blame the corona virus and the covid lockdown for what has happened this year it is likely that we would have had a very very bad economic year this year as well disaster number 2 that is factory output or manufacturing this has been a terrible year for manufacturing and again most of it is because of the lockdown caused by covid-19 but don't blame the corona virus alone because even before that for three successive quarters which means from july 2019 to march 2020 before the covid lockdown started we have had three successive quarters of negative growth in manufacturing which is that manufacturing has been going down so part of the reason was bad policies economic policies of the modi government first you had demonetization then badly implemented gst a bad gst architecture and finally now a poorly planned poorly implemented lockdown across india so what is happening manufacturing is likely to see a huge decline this year but as i said it has been happening for some time already and uh, if we look at investments investments are also going down sharply so look at it um, what is needed for manufacturing next year and uh, years coming ahead what we need is people and factories to buy machinery which is capital goods capital good production has dropped by 28% and along with that construction goods things needed for construction another big sector which uh, involves investments big ticket investments that has gone down by 17% and what is more government spending on infrastructure building and capital investments that has gone down in this year during the lockdown by 9% disaster number 3 there's been a huge increase in inequality in this country at the beginning of this year actually towards the end of last year december 2019 there were about 40.6 crore people with jobs in india it dropped sharply during the lockdown and then there was a recovery in july and september but in november it's dropped again so today we have about 39.4 crore people employed that is 1.2 crore less than what it was last year and mind you in the same period the number of people who can work who are able bodied and can work has gone up by 2.2 crore so 2.2 crore rise in the working age population and a 1.2 crore drop in the number of people who have jobs you can understand why inequality will grow and now look at the data compiled by cmi about the listed companies and their earnings that they reported in the september quarter which is 
uh, July, August, September, all their earnings. Now, their profits went up by 569%. I'm repeating, 569% jump in profit. Remove inflation from that. Remove that 7% inflation from that and yet you have a 562% growth in real profits for the corporate sector, for the listed companies, the biggest companies in India. And think about it. Around In that same quarter, India's GDP overall economy contracted by 7.5%. Look at wages. Wages and salaries went up by 3.5% in that same period. You're just for inflation, what do you get? You get a negative real wage growth of 3.5%. Now look at it. Uh, you might say that, okay, this uh, profit is not for all companies, so maybe it is possible that the wages went down in companies which made losses. No. The number of companies which made profits but yet cut wages was about 50% of all these companies. 50% of all these companies made more than 10% profit but cut wages for their workers. Real wages were cut by all companies. About 70% of all these companies cut real wages of workers. Um, many of them probably made some losses. But despite that, many who made profits still cut wages of workers. So they took this as an excuse to reduce what they were going to pay wage, uh, to workers and employees. And that means that this is a structural change they put in place, which is not going to change very soon. This brings me to disaster number four, and that is what has happened to the middle class. The middle class has traditionally been protected from economic slowdowns. Any economic setback that India has had, the middle class has more or less survived it. This is one year when the middle class has faced the worst of it. For every 100 people who had salaried jobs in 2019, 21 lost it. And most of these would be part of the middle class, right? So the middle class had a very bad year. White collar jobs shrunk sharply. And along with that, they had to dip into their uh, savings and spend 68% of people who responded to a survey by a company called Local Circle said that they had to eat into their savings to run their daily expenses because they either lost their job or they had to take pay cuts or they didn't get paid in time. Even an RBI survey, the November RBI consumer uh, survey tells us that about 63%, 63% of respondents said that their income had gone down. And this is just November, very recent. It's not as if there's been a recovery. 63% said their income has gone down. And this number would be broadly correct for the entire middle class. And finally, disaster number five. You're seeing it in the headlines wherever it's actually making it, which is farmers out on the road, on the borders of uh, Delhi. Thousands and thousands of farmers have been parked there for more than a month, fighting the biting cold, to protest against the Modi government's three farm bill, which effectively is going to ensure that their income is going to go into the hands of big agribusinesses. Big agribusinesses will take over farming and farmers will lose out. That is the biggest disaster we are seeing right now because it affects many, many people across India. The uh, mainstream media and mainstream economists will tell you that no, it's only the rich farmers who get affected by this because they are the only ones who get MSP. This is not true. New data available and made available to, and it's been published in the national media as well, shows that most of those who benefited from MSP are the poorest and smallest farmers. This is being taken away from them with these new three farm bills. But... Is this going to be the Modi government's Anna movement? The Anna movement, the Anna movement which kind of paralyzed the UPA government. Is this farming, pro the farmers' protest and the coming workers' protest, is that going to paralyze the Modi government in 2021? This is a question that one has to ask. And will the Modi government listen to it and make suitable changes and not just be a suit boot ki sarkar, which only caters to big business right now with a change? track which will change its course and make things better for the average Indian. Now that will only happen if you speak up. That's the only way 
the Modi government will listen to you. That's the only way where the mainstream media will be forced to take your voice and uh, make the government listen and do something about your daily problems. So here's wishing that 2021 is a year when you and I don't remain silent anymore.